Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. Uh, they celebrated by selective grinding uh, following remount, and uh, we prepared at this point to evaluate uh, the occlusion as established. Uh, you will notice that uh, we have marked this denture with the marking paper, and you see the appearance of the Gothic arch configurations throughout the posterior segment of the mandibular teeth. Uh, what you should see is that this is the area of the centric stop. It moves through this lingual embrasure to establish the guidance pathway uh, for the working movement. Again, from the centric occlusal stop, moving out in this direction is the balancing uh, pathway. And the protrusive pathway is from the centric stop out in this direction. And you see from our markings, we have just a minor contact relationship here for protrusive. The important thing for you to realize is that as, though the, although the Gothic arch configuration is apparent on this tooth, the smoothness of the guidance pathway from the centric occlusal stop through these various markings uh, is a broken pattern. In other words, uh, this area obviously is not in contact, while this area is in contact in the protrusive movement. On the second molar, the balancing contact is not a smooth, uh, free gliding contact. Now, this broken effect is created because of the uh, inability, usually, of the operator to, to create the exactness uh, to the contact relationship required. Um, in order to correct this, we have, on many uh, occasions, removed these segments of the occlusal surface of the tooth and replaced that uh, with an amalgam restoration and the development of the occlusal surface using uh, amalgam material. And for uh, your uh, viewing at this time, I would like to demonstrate uh, the steps involved uh, in the preparation of these teeth and in the development of the amalgam occlusal surface. The first step in the operation is to prepare uh, the surface of the tooth using the conventional uh, cutting instruments. And I'm going to use a small round burr here. And the first thing I'm going to do is to cut right down directly uh, in the area of the uh, uh, centric occlusal stop. And then we'll remove the debris to give you some indication of the uh, depth to which uh, we will cut these occlusal um, uh, preparations. Again here, we'll remove approximately a millimeter to a millimeter and a half of depth uh, in the um, occlusal of the tooth. And then with this round burr, we will proceed laterally, uh, cutting in the areas of the markings to totally eliminate the uh, grindings from the, from the tooth. And we only will remove that amount of tooth structure which is uh, occupied by the tracing uh, itself. And the, uh, you will recall that we mounted the maxillary and the mandibular denture from the patient and developed on the occlusal surface these Gothic arch tracings. Uh, therefore, the occlusal surface with the markings are really the resultant of the articulator and patient factors combined. Uh, in this instance, the uh, horizontal counter guidance of this articulator, which is set at 20 degrees, uh, represents a mechanical equivalent uh, taken from the patient. Therefore, when we removed the Gothic arch configuration on this particular side, uh, we can return that exact configuration using the articulator and the unaltered side by closing the instrument and allowing the articulator to move or moving the articulator in the various lateral and protrusive excursions and mill, if you will, the occlusal surface on this prepared side uh, in amalgam. Now, if you look at these preparations, you will see that they are approximately a millimeter and a half uh, to two millimeters in depth, slightly undercut, but follow the configuration established by the markings for the Gothic arch tracings. 
In fact, you will notice in the bicuspid region, we have not only developed the working, we have permitted the balancing to cross between the two teeth and involve the mesial buccal cusp of this first molar. And the protrusive, which was not uh, marking previously, to come from the centrioclusal stop and move into this area of the molar uh, through the contact uh, area for these two teeth uh, so that we now will restore the entire contact area as well as the occlusal surfaces of the bicuspid and the molar uh, in the amalgam material. So we can begin the mixing of the amalgam at this time and go ahead and restore uh, these occlusal surfaces. It usually takes uh, two or three ampules of uh, the amalgam material in order to restore these and uh, then closing the articulator uh, after packing the amalgam and gently moving uh, through the various uh, uh, movements. We'll go ahead and fill this and and pack the amalgam into the undercut areas. We have now completed the packing of the amalgam over the entire occlusal surface and we can now close the articulator and tap initially into centric occlusion and then begin to move the articulator the material that is in excess of course will be moved about and displaced by the preserved uh, lingual cusp of the maxillary tooth and as you open this and you begin to inspect uh, the carving and we can remove some of the excess material that has fallen away you begin to see and to get the appearance of the uh, various primordial forms that are dictated by the articulation and the tooth to tooth relationship get rid of some of the excess and then we can close this again and uh, allow the maxillary lingual cusp to uh, mill this uh, into the desired uh, Gothic arch configuration. And now it's moving nice and smooth and freely, and we have um, a complete absence of any uh, apparent uh, deflective contacts. At this point, we can now uh, proceed to carve uh, back the uh, exact uh, anatomical configuration uh, to the supplied tooth that uh, we desire. We have to be very careful in doing this so as not to break away those elements of the amalgam material that we desire. Now you can begin to see the appearance of the various Gothic arches that we had prepared. The continuation of the Gothic arch uh, tracing by now placing our marking paper over the uh, segments and closing the articulator and again moving it through the various lateral uh, and protrusive uh, excursions to see that the contact is continuous and it is a smooth uh, gliding contact uh, relationship. Mark it here in the lateral uh, movements and then in the uh, protrusive movement as well. Again, I think that uh, we should also reverse this paper uh, to mark the occlusal surfaces of the uh, maxillary teeth to make certain that we do have a preservation of the lingual cusp of the uh, maxillary posterior tooth. So we'll just mark that very carefully as well and then uh, move back and uh, evaluate what we have done. You will notice that uh, throughout the posterior uh, 
amalgam surfaces, the Gothic arch configuration now is continuous. This being a centric stop and the balancing path, the working path, and the protrusive path. In this instance, the working, balancing path, centric occlusal stop, working, balancing, protrusive path, centric occlusal stop, working, balancing, and protrusive path. So we now definitely have a continuous, smooth contact relationship throughout uh, the posterior occlusal surfaces on this side. So at this point, I think we'll go ahead and proceed by preparing the, uh, the opposite side uh, in preparation for the amalgam restorations. We have completed the amalgam preparations on both sides, and at this time, we might review uh, the Gothic arch configurations. Uh, you will notice that uh, from the centric occlusal stop on this side, we now have an intimate contact relationship on both working, balancing, and protrusive, and that this same uh, um, configuration is rather apparent throughout. Here again in the bicuspid molar region, the working, the balancing, and the protrusive and in the second molar region, also the uh, working, um, balancing, and the protrusive. Uh, at this point, uh, we would, of course, uh, remove these dentures and cleanse the occlusal surfaces, and I prefer to uh, treat these with a uh, sand uh, uh, burnishing of the surface so that after the delivery of the denture, we can see the wear pattern at 24 or 48 uh, hours. Another um, aspect of this that I think uh, should be uh, viewed by you to see the intimacy of the contact relationship is a lingual view. And uh, you will notice here in uh, looking uh, at the uh, lingual view of the um, uh, molar and bicuspid region that we have an excellent relationship here and that if you move this uh, through the various lateral excursions, you will see that uh, we have contact in this working movement and that as we proceed in a balancing movement, uh, the contact is also apparent. And coming back to centric occlusion and now moving in a protrusive movement, uh, the contact relationship is uh, uh, adequate uh, throughout uh, the posterior length. Again, uh, uh, in the working movement and in the balancing movement and in the protrusive movement. Now, if we look at the other side in the same uh, uh, relationship. You'll see here that, uh, again, uh, a very smooth contact relationship in working. Again, an equally uh, smooth uh, movement in balancing. And again, the preservation of the lingual cusp being very important to maintain uh, that relationship. And likewise, in the uh, protrusive movement, uh, you will see that coming out of centric occlusion, up those various amalgam occlusal surfaces, uh, we have uh, an excellent uh, contact relationship. So at this point, uh, the movement would be to uh, remove the dentures and to polish them, as I've said, and to uh, return to the patient in the clinic and to deliver the restoration. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.